Okay, I've been coin chess and wine here again on Friday, October 22nd, 2010. The first video I did this evening dealt with the S&P 500, uh, the NASDAQ, and a little bit of the uh, financial sector ETF, the XLF. This video, I'd just like to cover the other major uh, sectors and indices as well as uh, some individual names. What you're looking at right here is a daily chart of the Russell 2000 uh, index dealing with the small cap high risk, high reward type of situation. It's a pretty good gauge of risk appetite. And you're looking here at the daily chart, and as you can see, again, just like with the broad market, a pretty steep uptrend since uh, late August, early September here. And over the past week or so, we, we've definitely uh, came down. We've had a, the market seemed like it needed to, to take a pause, to take a rest, to consolidate, and it did indeed come down, especially here on Thursday, yesterday, and break below the support trend line. And today, again, uh, although today was a green day, uh, we're kind of coming to terms with this support trend line. But I want to emphasize that we're operating above all rising major moving averages. And I think within the context of a multi-month bull run, I think it's entirely healthy and reasonable to expect uh, a test of the rising 20-day moving average throughout that uptrend. And I, just because we come down and we break what is a very steep angle of, of ascent here, for the support trend line uh, just because we break below that I, that doesn't automatically mean I think that you need to get bearish in fact I would resist the urge to get bearish until we start to see more concrete evidence uh, for example if we come in next week and we see a big red arrow here slicing below through the 20-day moving average on heavy volume that would be a reason for me to say okay you know what I'm going to respect this, this change in uh, market trend here, or at least the potential for it. I'm going to back off some longs. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily that I'll go all in short, but you know, let it start to happen. And the reason why you let it happen before you act on it is because you don't want to go against the prevailing trend. And the prevailing trend is unquestionably higher here. Regardless of how intelligent you think your macroeconomic thesis is, uh, if you if you if you were investing based on that this whole way up here in September and October, you lost a lot of money and you, you don't want to do that. So again, the, the trend remains higher. A test of the rising 20-day moving average, as we saw here, it came close to it on Thursday, is entirely healthy. Um, the Dow Jones Transportation Index is a very, very bullish chart here. This upper pink line that I drew here is actually uh, the 52-week highs dating back to last April. So that shows you how close the transportation stocks are to to, uh, to to 52 week highs and I think that that's very important from a bullish thesis because the transportation stocks are historically leading indicators and throughout the course of this summer down here they never really made a lower low dating back to uh, last February as I noted countless times here so I think that was a bullish divergence uh, even at the, during the depths of this past summer's uh, correction but what we've got is a situation, again, a bona fide breakout above that trading range from this summer. And what's been most impressive over the past week or so is how the transportation stocks have consolidated and come to terms with that breakout in a very orderly way, uh, and, but just below the 52-week highs. So I think uh, while a test of the rising 20-day moving average here, again, would be entirely healthy, I would not rule out uh, an upside explosion next, next week because I think this is a very bullish pattern here. Uh, I also want to look at the Emerging Market ETF here, the EEM. That had been very extended here, as I pointed out, since it broke out of this multi-month symmetrical triangle in September. It was just kind of drifting drifting higher seemingly every day. And I, I was pleased to see that it came down and tested its 20-day moving average. Again, this is a situation where you want to resist the urge to automatically become bearish just because it came down in a harsh way here on Tuesday. Uh, if it continues to go down next week, a big red candle down to the 50-day, then again, that's re only then would that be a reason to get more cautious. But I think Sears Holdings, one of my individual stocks that I have, it's a pretty good indication of, of, of why you don't just presume a change of trend. On Thursday, had this nasty reversal candle. But on, again, there was, there was no reason. The, the chart wasn't broken. There was no reason to just get bearish for the sake of being bearish here. And indeed, there was no follow through to the downside today as the stock actually uh, closed up green. And again, the past couple weeks, if given time for stocks like ATPG that, that were extended and now it's no longer extended. In fact, I think it's had a pretty good buy point. So good market here.